hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another week at Eight Feathers Homestead. We are preserving apples. A lot of apples. I have already done one canner full of applesauce. I chopped them up last night, put them in my big roaster, and just let them cook overnight on like 150 degrees. And then today I immersion and blended them. And I'm getting ready to do it a second time around. This time I'll cook it a little faster so that maybe it doesn't turn so brown. We don't really care too much, but you know, I, I might try. I will tell you, I got sick and tired of peeling apples. So I'm leaving the skins on. Do what makes you happy. I just know with a huge roaster like this, like I was gonna be there all night. Um, these apples that I'm processing right now, these came from my friend and I feel very blessed to get them. Um, they are very buggy, so you can see all the little things. So there has been a lot of trimming to be done, which has made for a very happy pig and chickens and a happy goat. And I apologize because Miss Astrid is in a whining phase right now and everything is a tragedy. So if you hear that, that's why. Anyway, I am going to be cutting these up. I don't know where my stand is, so forgive me for my absolutely fantastic cinematography here. Ta-da! So all I'm doing is quartering my apples. This one's moldy. It smells like molds too. I learned my lesson yesterday. I tasted one that had mold in the middle and I cut it off and I was like, oh, it'll be fine. Oh no. That uh, whole apple was infused with that mold flavor. So just pitch those. Trust me, it is not worth that disgusting taste in your mouth. Then I just quarter them and uh, I toss it into my waste pan and I make sure I don't have any, you know those little like sharp thingies that hold the seeds? I make sure that I don't have those. And since I'm cooking these ones up faster, I'm just going to cut them into chunks. Now when I did them last night, I just left them in quarters because I knew that they were going to cook really slow all night. With these, since I want them to cook a little bit faster, I'll just cut them up a little bit. But yeah, it's just as easy as that. See, that's why you cut them up. You've got bug waste there. They'll make for happy critters. I just went out and saw our pig. I didn't realize how huge he is. I gotta figure out how to get that doggone guy to lock her because he sure doesn't want to go. I mean, I can't blame the guy, but he definitely needs to be turned into sausage and bacon and the like. And see, some of these are just, they're just spoiled, so. Hi-ho, hi-ho, off to the critters they go. There's never, ever, ever waste at our house. This is a very busy time. Gotten very little of anything else done. I haven't even really baked very much for my family. So, anyway, this is what I'm up to. Applesauce is my first project. Um, but I still have slotted to go. Hopefully I'll get it all done today is apple pie filling because that's a big one in our house. We really love apple pie filling. And I want to make some caramel apple jam. I have quite a bit of apple butter left from um, last year, but we've been using it a bit more. It's really, really good scooped on oatmeal. So I'm thinking I might do that. And uh, this won't be all the apples I process. My friends own an orchard down in Nevada, Iowa, which is, I don't know, about half an hour from here. And their pie apples are not quite ready. They're waiting for that frost to kiss them. So I'll go back and, and get some of those to make more pie filling too. So this is only the first flush of apples. I've been very blessed by very generous friends. Stay tuned because we got a special surprise that I'll show you at the end of the video. You want to see it. Trust me, you don't want to miss it. Bye-bye. Here is how our applesauce turned out. I apologize for not showing the grinding and the jarring. I was just kind of distracted and in a hurry, but that's what it looks like in the jar. You can see the skin bits. Doesn't bother us a bit. It's nice and thick. And yeah, my hands are covered with flour because I'm baking too. But uh, yeah, and I'm out of bowls, so... Coffee mug applesauce, yay! You could just drink it out of the cup. That's how it turned out. Really nice if you don't mind brown applesauce. And if you do, feel free to skin those apples and just cook it fast and you won't have that issue. Alrighty, there you go. Yum, yum. So this is my life now, peeling apples. I have done two roasters full of applesauce today. The first one was just plain, and the second one 
was cinnamon and I did add some sugar. Though it was good the way it was, we thought it might be fun to add just a bit of sugar. And there's Aiden. And right now, I honestly, I don't know what I'm doing. It's late and I was gonna make another roaster full of applesauce. And then I thought, you know, it would be a lot quicker and easier to make some apple pie jam. So I'm cutting into my pig bucket here. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm actually dropping these into acidulated, that's a fancy pants word for you, acidulated water, meaning I squirted some lemon juice, bottled lemon juice into my water. <laughs> oh, ah. Welcome to my ride here. Anyway, whatever, I can't get this to work. You know, it's whatever. Anyway. Okay, Aiden, enough. Anyway, I love him, but it's been a long day, and I'm ready for my children to go to bed. No, thank you. Yes, thank you. <laughs> we'll see how this jam turns out. I did not get as much done today as I wanted to. Youth group, all those things that happen on Sundays for our family just kind of took precedence, and that's okay. Got to go for a nice bike ride with Mr. Christopher while we waited, and visited with some friends. Tammy and Todd, I don't know if you watch my channel, but if you do, hi, it was great seeing you today. Anyway, that's what I'm up to. I apologize, I did not come back and show you immersion blending the apples for that second batch, but I did indeed do so. And then I threw them into the canner and they're on the counter cooling down now. I've been hearing the, the pops of lids I've been using superb lids a lot lately. They're thicker, they're truly American made and manufactured. They're manufactured in Ohio. I've seen pushes by one lid company in particular, I won't mention, but they tend to be on big YouTube channels and they say they're US made. As far as I know, they're still manufactured in China. I'll put this disclaimer out there right now. I don't care where lids come from if they're good. I like to use pure lids. They come from China, but they're honest about their advertising. Well, relatively, I mean, they do have a US flag on their thing, but it's pretty obvious they're manufactured in China. Um, companies that claim to be US made, but are not in fact manufactured here, that kind of bothers me. So I like that about Superb Woods is they actually walk the walk. I recently reached out to them and asked them if maybe they would be willing to partner with me to provide lids to viewers and uh, we're having a conversation because I would love to be able to share their lids with you guys so that you can try them for yourselves and see what you think. They're a lot thicker than a standard lid which I really like because I have some old jars with super thick shoulders and they seal really well. I will say I had one seal failure with these lids today. I'm thinking though it was more operator error than lid error because I used a rusty band and I don't think that it snugged down quite enough and I should probably just like turn that into a cute pumpkin craft or something. So I'm not sure if that was lid failure or band failure, but I did have one that didn't seal. So that's my actually my first one out of like six or seven dozen, but it happens to the best of them. Anyway, I'm going to get these cut up and probably make some jam. So I'll see you in a little bit. Okay, I have six cups of diced apples, one half of a cup of water. It says half a teaspoon of butter. Like, how do you even determine that? That's just like, it's a little blip on the radar. You know, we'll call that about a half teaspoon. I think it's close. Close enough. Good enough for government work, as they'd say. Uh, Remember, I was in the Navy for a long time, so I can I can dog on government people a little bit. So I'll let this warm up and start doing this thing. In the meantime, I need to grate up one quarter of a teaspoon of mig of the nut. Nutmeg. Uh, use the recipe calls. Oh my gosh, I can't do anything tonight. The recipe calls for half a teaspoon of cinnamon. A quarter teaspoon of nutmeg. It seems a little light on the pie seasonings for me, but we'll see. Like I've told you before, I always do a recipe the way it is once. I have this cute little 
it came with a particular liqueur here that I won't show, but anyway, it was chocolate and Dutch. So yeah, um, I keep my little nutmeg berries inside. Once upon a time, I found this amazing deal for nutmeg berries at one of the stores that we deliver to, and it was like crazy cheap. And then I got my nutmeg grater, and I'm just gonna grate out. Hopefully it won't ah, bounce in the table room. This isn't the sodious table. It's a plastic table. In the middle of renovation, you don't need to worry about a fancy table, so I don't. All right. I love the smell of fresh nutmeg. One of our favorite things here is eggnog. My kids do that now. They're, they're experts. Of course, we do it with raw egg. So, just milk, cream, raw egg, maple syrup, and nutmeg. That's about it. Christopher, my eight-year-old, is, is an absolute expert at it. Oh, if only you could smell this. Mmm. Oh, it just smells, it smells like holidays, really. Oh, that is such a beautiful smell. It smells like fall. I'm a big smell person. Like, I'm very, very uh, much associate smells with various things. And I figure that's just fine. This is a little bit over a quarter of a teaspoon. We really like nutmeg, so I'm not even going to worry about that. And I've got less cinnamon in bulk size because what big family doesn't do bulk size, right? And then my other ingredients are two cups of firmly packed brown sugar, three cups of white sugar, and then I have a package of powdered pectin. That will be dumping in when the time comes. So typically, yeah, I don't know what I'm thinking. Anyway, so this is going to go and go and go. And I'll bring you back the next step. Alrighty. We're back. The direction said to cook the apples until they were tender. Which... I mean, they still have a little bite to them, but by the time we get all done here, they should be perfect. I don't want them to be mush, but mmm, they're delicious. Very nice. So, got those going. I might give a little bit more of that. One I just had was still a bit toothy. Yeah, I don't recommend sticking your hands in the in a hot pan but you know i'm a baker i do it all the time so while this is cooking i'm going to go on a little bit of a rant if you have watched my channel for any length of time i occasionally go on rants there was a a rather large uh facebook personality who had made a post today about rebel canning and and saying that if you're if you're teaching rebel canning then it's your fault if somebody gets sick I know for my channel here, I always put out a disclaimer. I believe in this thing though called personal accountability. Like if you choose to do something, that's on you. And if you don't feel that way, this probably isn't the channel for you because here, you, you know, we all have to be adults. If I mention something, that's what I do. That's what I choose to do based on my own research, my own comfort level and I'm not twisting anybody out there's arm to do what I'm doing. I'm just sharing what I'm doing. But uh, that really bothered me because we've entered this age where you don't have to be accountable. You can just blame somebody else. And that's just not real life, folks. That would be, I, I can't even think of a comparison for that. <laughs> it's pretty much saying because one driver's ed teacher taught you to do something a certain way, that it's their fault if anybody gets in a wreck. I, that doesn't even make sense. I don't know. You, I, hopefully you get what I'm saying. I'm so tired. I don't even know what I'm saying. But my, my point is, yeah, rebel canning is a thing. Our nation is controlled by three and four letter agencies. And they like to regulate things. And the thing that I found amusing was so many people were putting down rebel canners and they were saying, well, you need to follow the ball book. Well, guess what? Those three and four letter agencies, they, <laughs> uh, they don't recommend using ball. 
recipes. They recommend using theirs. So I thought that was kind of amusing that people saying that you should use the ball book are actually being rebels because those recipes are not USDA approved. Tisk tisk tisk. So as always, folks, my point is, you know, do everything at your own risk. Do your own research. Read for yourself. I'm not here to spoon feed you. I'm just here to share my crazy little farm life. All right, now these are tender and I'm running out of liquid. So I'm going to go ahead and add in my packet of powdered pectin. Hey, 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 I said it. I said it. And then we are going to boil this nice and vigorously for a minute. Oh, one got out. Nom, nom, nom. And then uh, after that, we'll add our sugar. Anyway, I don't know what it was about that. It just rubbed me the wrong way because I feel like we've gotten so far away from personal accountability that it's just ridiculous. You shouldn't even have to put a disclaimer on things. But common sense appears to be something that's becoming somewhat of a rarity. And hopefully nobody out there is offended. Certainly not my intent. I'm just pointing out that, you know, we, we have to put on our big, big boy, big girl clothes and make the best choices for ourselves and our families and not vilify others who think differently than we do. And I'm not insinuating anybody here does. But I will tell you, if you do feel that way, this probably isn't the place for you. You know, I think subscribers are great. I hope someday I have a whole bazillion of them. I think that would be freaking outstanding. But I'm never going to do something to pander for subscribers. I'm just not going to do it. That's not who I am. That's not who I've ever been. And that's not who I intend to be. So if I rub you the wrong way, I apologize. Um, I just wanted to put that out there that, you know, it's just always do things at your own risk. Do your own research. Do what you're comfortable with. There's things that I see on, on rebel groups that I would never do. I'm like, whoa, that's that's different. But that doesn't mean that that person is wrong. It's just not how I choose to do things. So, you know, it's okay to be different. It's okay to disagree on things. It's just being simple about it. That's all I care about. All right, it has, oh, yeah, it's been about a minute. So now what I'm gonna do is add in my sugar all at once and I'm going to stir this up we're going to bring this to a rolling boil that cannot be stirred down and we are going to boil it for one minute oh yeah that's that's the stuff right there that's the stuff this is so beautiful. Look at that. It really does look like apple pie filling. I will add in the spices at the end after it has boiled. Does it matter when it gets added? I don't know, but I'm going to do it at the end. I'm already like thinking of ways I'm going to modify this in the future. Like I'm thinking, hmm, maybe I'll add some vanilla bean paste. You know just some some other fun things so we'll see i had planned on chalking like all these apple recipes into one video but honestly i'm telling you this is like part one of apple palooza i'm just putting that out there right now because if i if i do every apple project i have it's gonna be a really long video and nobody's gonna want to watch it because i wouldn't want to watch a really long video <laughs> So yes, this is this is closing up part one of Apple Palooza, and I've been, been sitting here. I've been thinking of so many other things you can do with apples, and I feel like you know, kid in a candy store. I'm like all giddy. So, mmm, that's so good, mm, yummy. Once this um gets all up to a rolling boil, I will bring you back and show you. So there you go, and I will can these for. 10 minutes in that boiling water canner. I can't wait to see this in jars. This is just beautiful. And here's a boil we can't stir down. I just set my one minute timer. 
it's a rock and roll one. Boy, is that pretty and pretty hot. There we go. I don't want you to miss that. I notice while I'm editing, sometimes some things are kind of out. I, I need to learn a little bit better cinematography, I think, you know. But boy, is that pretty. I tell you what. I'm actually going to go ahead and add in my spices now. Oh, let's see. Oh my goodness, it smells like apple pie. It sure does. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, my timer's gonna about to go off and I'm gonna get this into my jars. We have a quarter inch head space. Here's how the apple pie jam worked out. I put the rest in downstairs on the larder shelves. This is what was left over. Look at that. Beautifully thick, set perfectly. It's chunky, delicious, very, very sweet and rich though. So it's definitely something to use in moderation. But yeah, I put some of this in small decorative jars because I am also going to give this as holiday gifts. Who doesn't want a cute little jar of jam, right? That's some homemade sourdough bread, maybe some Irish butter. You get the idea. Anyway, that's that. Pretty exciting. Well, hello, hello. Happy Apple Palooza Day again. Today I am making apple leather. I'm just turning on the heat. I have six quarts of cut up apples. You'll notice they're a little bit brown. I cut them up last night. I put them in lemon water, drained it out, but they still browned a little, no big deal. They'll be just fine. And I just added about a cup of apple cider just to help them. They're gonna boil down for about 10 minutes. And I'm gonna add sugar to taste. I'm gonna add some spices, probably some cinnamon, maybe nutmeg. And I actually think I'm gonna play around a little bit and add a packet of pectin and see if that makes their texture um, different. I thought it might be fun to experiment so we'll see how that goes. But I know that to fruit leather is something that we all really enjoy. I was just racking my brain. What should I make? What should I make? So this is my project for tonight. So, so far we have made apple sauce, apple pie jam, and now we have apple leather. And after this gets done, I'll probably go ahead and post this video because I have a lot more to go and it's been a while since I posted. So tomorrow we will get to see what this looks like. In the meantime, I'm going to cook this down for about 10 minutes till it's nice and soft. I am going to try the immersion blender. If it doesn't get as fine as I would like it to be, I'll throw it into that ninja blender. We'll just see what kind of texture we get. So I'll probably bring you back when I'm grinding that down. In the meantime, it's going to cook away. Here it is. I am going to whiz this up with my immersion blender and see what happens. mixture here. I ended up adding a little bit over a cup of sugar and this is kind of hard to do one-handed. Hey Aiden, would you pull the camera for me? A little bit over a cup of sugar, about a tablespoon and a half of, of uh, cinnamon, a teaspoon of vanilla bean paste, and two boxes of pectin. I'm using these um, Sopatish mats. They're not that brand. I trimmed them down to fit on this. They weren't working real well for the cookies I was making. However, they work fantastically for this kind of stuff. They're, they're a wonderful, kind gift. David, if you're watching, thank you so much. They're definitely getting used. Maybe not the way that they were, but uh, they're definitely getting used. So I'm spreading this out. It's kind of thin, not like super thin, but I'm spreading it out. I'm gonna try for about Oh, I don't know, about an eighth to a sixteenth of an inch consistency. I'm going to put this in my dehydrator. Um, the dehydrator instructions say 135 degrees, so that's what I'll do. If you don't have that, 
put some parchment on a baking sheet, put this in the oven, and 170 degrees is normally the lowest that an oven will go. So put it at 170 degrees, and then what I would do is prop the door open a little bit with a wooden spoon, and then uh, just keep an eye on it. It's done when it's dry, but pliable. It won't look like, it won't look wet anywhere in particular. You should be able to peel it up and manipulate it all that you need to. I'm super excited to see how this turns out. I mean, it looks, smells, and tastes amazing already. So I can only imagine what it's gonna be like once it dehydrates. I will bring you back tomorrow to see what this looks like. Here it is. Our apple leather is done. It turned out just beautiful. I think I will always add pectin from now on. It worked out super well. And of course, there's Aiden in the background. I am very happy with this. It is LAFE approved. He ate two or three pieces. Check. Check this out. It's pliable. I will coat this with either rice flour or cornstarch to be able to store them long term. I don't have wax paper. I might use parchment paper too. We'll see. I don't really think they're going to last for long term storage, but there you go. My last project for what I am calling Apple Palooza, part one. So I'm going to get this cut up, packaged up and then we're gonna move on to the next thing. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy what we do, please consider liking and subscribing, and we will see you next week for more Apple Palooza. Okay, I don't know, oh yeah, you can see them just fine. This was a big surprise. We got twin Holstein Jersey steers, who will eventually be food, but for now they're our sweet, wonderful little bottle babies, and they're so hungry. This one I'm touching. The little spotted one is hamburger. And this little cutie is steak, yes. Again, they're Jersey Holstein crosses. And uh, in a couple years, they will be food, but for now, they're just precious little sweet things. And as with all of our animals, we love them dearly. And Magnus is being grumpy. Right now, I have them in the barn where they're nice and warm because our next couple of nights are gonna have some freeze warnings. Right, boys? We just got them a couple days ago, so yeah. That's our that's our surprise. Sweet little baby boys. Little twinnies. Yes, you are. It's about time to give them their evening bottles. See, they're so little, you can still see on vocal cord. Isn't that just the cutest thing? So we need to come out and give you guys your bottles for the night, don't we? Yes, we do. They're gonna figure out they can knock over these hay bales pretty quick, aren't you? Yes, you are. Anyway, we will see you for part two of Apple Palooza. Bye bye.